I'm Matt Mills, and I'm joined here on stage by Lauren Offers, and we're here to show you Orasma, a technology that's about to change the way we see and interact with the world around us. Now, just 15 years ago, computers were heavy and cumbersome, and hardwired internet was the norm, not the exception. Not only that, but getting information from the internet required time and patience, and when you, you stepped away from your computer, you left cyberspace and were returned to the real physical world. We live in a very different world today. Because of the incredible processing power on mobile devices and the inputs that they have, we can start to make mobile phones and tablets hear, see, and map the world in a very similar way to the way us as human beings do. And this means that we're now at the dawn of the age of visual browsing. So this is a little bit like looking at television in the 1940s, but let's get right in and show you some demos. So Lauren has here an iPad. This would also work on an iPhone or an Android device, um, but we use it because we can mirror the screen and we've got on the table a newspaper. So she's going to point at the newspaper, and what you'll see is a bulletin. Now, what's really cool about this technology is that we can link up any image to any piece of digital content, and this linking of an image to a piece of digital content is what we call an aura. Now, in this case, this newspaper is out of, out of date as soon as it's printed at 3 o'clock in the morning, and although all the processing is done on the phone, we can actually change that video right up until the second that someone points at that page. So this is going to revolutionize the market for, for print, both in terms of advertising and also editorial. Now, what's really cool about the technology is it doesn't just detect an object, but it also knows where it is in the 3D world. So as I turn this around through 360 degrees, even through three dimensions, you'll see that because of the awesome processing power that we've got available to us now on, on phones and tablets, you can actually map it pretty well on the 3D world. You've also got a buy button, and that's a call to action. So the user can click and either be taken to a website or some sort of mobile transactional page. The important thing is, because this is all done without any trickery or QR codes or, or sort of watermarking or anything, we can take real world objects. So in this case, we've got a wireless router or router, as my American colleagues keep telling me it should be pronounced. And uh, as you pointed it, you can see that we've got the cables flying in in situ to explain how you should install it. And this is a completely real wireless router that our friends at, at Sky gave us. So we think this is going to revolutionize the market for education as well, because what's really cool is you can go to museums and you can go to art galleries. And rather than having those NAF headsets, you can just walk around and point at things. So. What next? Well, we don't just map the 3D world. We also want to start inserting 3D objects into the 3D world. So we think the next step in this sort of shifting of the human computer paradigm is to bring in really lifelike 3D interactive models. And that's why today we are launching Orasma 3DI. So the first thing I have is a, uh, is a 2D building floor plan. And when I pop it on the floor, Lauren's going to point at it. This is fresh out of the lab. Now, what is really cool about this is that this is a huge 3D model. This is a 60,000 poly count model, and it's got built in animation. So if Lauren actually taps on it, you can see that we've got animation built in. And again, because it's all got this 3D mapping, I can move the object around. Now, this is where we are now, OK? So we've, we've got the ability to tap on the screens because we're doing this on mobile phones. But we think this platform is bigger than mobile phones and tablets. And so the next step is starting to think more intelligently about the interactive element. And that's where we've got this. This is Orasma Hockey. Now, let's say this was in eyewear. What you want is to be able to use your hands as the controller. So what Lauren can do is just by putting her fingers in front of the screen, we can attach a puck to our fingers, and she can actually play an interactive game of air hockey on the screen. Cool. So what we're not launching today is Erasmus 3D and Erasmus I. We're launching 3DI. And that means we've got to combine the two. And that's what the last demo in this short section is going to show you. So this is Erasmus Shootout. Now what we have here is a huge 3D model of a football stadium. And when Lauren taps, we've got a little uh, 3D footballer he's going to run on. And he's going to start shooting balls. 
And Lauren's going to try and stop them with her fingers. So you can see that we've, uh, she's knocked a ball back there. You can also see that her score is building up on the screen at the moment. And when we stop the game, this is all linked into Facebook and Twitter, so she can share her score with her friends and sort of compare how she's doing against them. The thing that's really cool here is this is a platform. So, Lauren, can you take a quick video of everyone? Now, guys, can you all cheer, like wave and cheer? Three, two, one, go. <laughs> that's awesome. OK, so what we're going to do is tag that to an object which we think is quite ubiquitous. And we've got a demo logo here. So if we can just jump back to the screen. Joy of live demos. Um, so the thing that's really cool is we've got a platform which can understand in excess of 500,000 objects on each device already. And the cool thing is you can have user-generated bits to it as well. So Lauren's going to set one up now. Now, we're run out of time, so I'm just going to finish up by saying we think this is the future of human-computer interaction, and we want to share it with everyone here. And thank you very much for your time, but I think we're up. So cheers.